Hi. <laughs> So I have my phone up on a tripod, so I won't really be able to see anything that's going on up there. I'm going to try not to hit my head on this. Lights. And we're going to try to go through uh, some steps of how to do this. We're going to put a heart in the center. And in order to do that, we have to find the center. So what we're going to do is flatten it out, square, and you can see the complete face of uh, the shirt. We're going to go through, we're going to mark each corner with a small line. The shirt's a large. I go through, a flatten it down to the face, and then I uh, mark each corner. Do this. See, I've, I've already folded it once. But there's a crease there, but I just match the lines up. Try to get that as even as possible. Brown. Add a little bit. I have my two lines touching there, and I got my two lines here touching. in there. What I can do is either reach in there with this and mark it, bam, and then reach in here and mark it. Or I can just push down on it, get a nice crease, uncrease it, I mean unfold it, and then mark here and mark here. that in the center there. So I think that shifted a little bit. Okay. Now we have our center lines. And what we're going to do now is we're going to fold this, sh this sleeve inside this sleeve. That way um, it's folded down the, the center uh, on both sides, but I'll show you. We're going to fold it like this down the center. So when we lay the die, whatever I lay on this side, the shirt seeps through directly to the other side. So we get a pretty much a pretty close mirror image left to right. And the way we do that is make sure our lines sync up there. We're going to take this sleeve, either or, and we're going to put it inside the other one. Make sure our lines are so we might yeah. Make sure our lines match up. Man, this is not the sleeves in there. Find our lines again, we match these up. front, left and right front, and then this is the back. So whatever I do on this side, and I could lay it like this, and I could put die right here, cross, it swiggle, and it would pretty much mirror on the other side, 
the more layers it goes through, the more distorted it's going to be. So exactly what I do on this side, it probably isn't going to come out on that side. Um, check my lines. So, what I'm going to do at this point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do on the front, I'm going to do one design. And on the back, I'm going to do a different design. That's flat. I'm gonna draw heart here, half a heart. And I just use a washable marker. I should have said that initially, huh? And what this is gonna be is my fold line. This is gonna be the line that I fold down. Um, I'll show you how I do that. You can use any marker. I just um, I tend to try to stay close to the color that I'm gonna lay dye on it. That way, I, I remember. Sometimes I tend to put like little niches here. Um, or I'll do something like this. Something like that. We'll see what comes of that later. Um, now I'm gonna do a design on it. So when I fold this, I'm gonna fold just this hat. I'm gonna fold it like this. Fold this by itself, and then I'm gonna do something different on the back. Do we'll something like try a couple different shapes and let it kind of take the shape it really kind of man I sound like a hippie when I, when I take the shape that it wants to take I can choose which line looks best to me looks more natural um, the thing about the back one is it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be more of an abstract shape. The one in the front is going to be a lot more um, clear, defined. This stuff right here, it's, a, it's pretty much a, like a, a waxed thread. 
Um, they have different like 10, 10 strength and stuff. This one's used a couple times. I liked it because it was blue. The problem is it would um, snap on me. So I'm gonna try not to put as much force on it whenever I do it this time. So I'm gonna rotate this. Now I'm gonna fold down this. I'm gonna do an accordion fold, which is pretty much just the forward and back. Like this. Like, uh, like you would like if you were making a paper fan. And uh, I'm gonna do that along this line, and you'll see kind of what takes place is I'm gonna try to keep the, the color that I'm following and as straight as a possible line, that's gonna be my fold line. I'm just going to fold down this and I'm going to make this curve. And I can make these folds as big or as little as I want. I like to keep them fairly small. that in a little bit. I might make some minor adjustments. You can see that. You see how that line is pretty much straight down. This is going to be where I tie. I'm sorry. This is going to be where I tie right there. And um, go underneath it. Um, if you're doing this at home and you don't want to buy like sinew or any of this stuff, what you can use if you have it is like a dental floss, like a wax dental floss. Or really, you can use, people use thread too. Um, what you're doing is restricting the dye to getting in these fibers because you're pretty much cutting off any ability for it to expand and absorb it. Now you'll see this is going to be real tight. Try not to pull. Last time I did this, I pulled it way too tight. So what I'll do is I'm gonna cut that and tie it. So now when I dye it, um, it helps you remember. If you do a lot of these, you kind of remember when you're looking at it what's what. But if you go through, you just take a, a marker and you remind yourself. Hey, I'm going to dye this part pink. This is washable, so that will come off. I'm going to do the same thing with the back. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do the side first. I'm going to try to... I don't really know what exactly I was planning on doing with this. But... Alright, you know I'll do the back first, and then I'll try to make sense of that. And the more folding you do on, on a shirt or a piece of fabric, the, the tighter some areas are going to be to be able to line them up properly. Um, so I just do the same thing. I'm going to follow the, the grain line since it's the last one I did, is this one. Um, and I just kind of pull it in, take the corner. I used to just um, offset the folds, and fold it all together, and the heart, the way I would offset it, would actually become like these, more of a concept of, a, of wings. And I was like, why am I doing that? And sometimes they turned out real good, and sometimes not as much. 
um, when I can just fold half and I'll fold the other half and just get it closer to exactly what I'm looking for. Now my shirts, I um, I prep them. So what I do is I uh, I make a solution of this stuff called soda ash, which is pretty similar to baking soda, but it's not baking soda. You can get it at like a pool store, um, or you can make it yourself. Um, I don't want to say like make it, make it. You can take baking soda and literally boil it. When I say boil it, I mean just putting dry powder in a pan, applying heat to it, no liquid. The powder will actually boil and it'll take it from baking soda. Once it stops bubbling, it has made a transformation. You'll see like a, a difference in it um, to soda ash and you've made soda ash. Tight corners, what I do is I just kind of push it in like that, and then I bring that around and try to make it a continuation. Um, the objective is just to get the string to follow the same line. So even if it folds over, then it will it'll get kind of like a, like a comb over effect. You'll be tying around almost in a circle, kind of making like a balloon, a fabric. Um, that's okay as long as you follow the line and as long as you tie around that line. Where you at, buddy? Alright. Got this one. Connect it to like that. Kind of like fold the note under like that. Oh, a little harder there. Man, I might get a little frustrated, but in all honesty, sometimes it's better just to start over and just kind of get it how you want it instead of screwing it up and not liking what you're looking at at the end product. Sometimes it's just better just take an extra two seconds and. straight line right there. My, uh, my one daughter, who's a um, teacher, is like super active, sweetheart, um, decided she was going to run around and drop off pencil boxes at doorsteps of her students so they'd have their supplies. My daughter's in like first grade. I know she's an artistic person. I decided to go through and make her a little tie-dye kit. She's got like three or four kids. And uh, make her a tie-dye kit in a box. So maybe she'll have some stuff to do with her kids. And I'm going to tie it right there. You could actually use a rubber dam in that. Well, if you wanted. Man, this is not cooperating for me as well as it usually does. But as you can see, bam, through here. Sensor down. 
down a little bit. Bro. Too, too tight. I'm breaking it. What I was saying was, um, so I prepped these with soda ash and water. Like I, so I get soda ash, I add it to some water, and it makes like this light cloudy, almost looks like cornstarch water. It looks like there's like, like you are washing out rice. So that would be rice starch water, but it's kind of cloudy. And I like dunk the dry shirts in there and I let them soak up some of that and then I squeeze it all the excess and I let it kind of damp. Like if you were running through the rain into Walmart, get to that dampness. And um, that's when I fold it. So it's got a little bit of moisture in there, it comes out a little crease, but it'll actually uh, absorb quite a bit of dye. I get the bolder colors and I get crisper lines as well. And if I were to have it completely dry, tie it here first and then I'll tie it here. This is going to get a lot thicker. So, the problem with thicker folds is you have to saturate it with dye slowly and maybe sometimes a couple times to get it through all the layers. I started over here and then I just kind of walked it a little bit over to get it closer to the line where I wanted it. It's just going to be a little extra accent piece on the side. lot thinner than the stuff I'm used to using. I have no idea what I did with it. All I'll do is uh, one color here and one color there. And, um, Heart 
right here. I have my my wings right here in the back. Just that section right here. Um, and right here I have a little accent piece on the sides. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll kind of fold it down like that. I'm not going to fold that part. Um, I'll probably just do like a crimple die like this. So I'll just kind of fold it up, try to keep the, the folds profile slightly low. Like this. So uh, I don't have to worry about having to saturate it so much. Um, and I'll throw some rubber bands on that and have my, my heart my wings, my accent piece right there. So I'll probably put pink. I'm trying to remember that pink or whatever they call it. These two are going to mirror. And then I'll probably do, um, um, color I want to do on the back. Those two colors right there, and I don't know what color I'm gonna do with the base. Maybe some blue, purple, black. I mean, you could do anything in the middle right there. You could just um, put like a twist or mirror, pleated, spiral. Once again, we have our hearts, our wings, and our side accent piece right there. That's pretty much how you dye it. On the other side, you'll have okay. So that's pretty much how you get your left to right similarity. So like when you look at a shirt, and you're like, wow, it's so balanced, the left and the right. What's well, because they're doing they're folding it down the middle, and anything they do on one side is going to bleed through to the other side. That's why it looks so mirrored, but it's not like a perfect mirror, but pretty, pretty close. Uh, This one, this is one of my trial shirts. Um, what I did is I scribbled my line there and I just kind of folded it down so that it's a very quick fold. That tied right there. I dyed everything in the bottom. I actually uh, I dipped it in purple, like pre-mixed purple. And then I did the same thing, I dipped this in black. Um, and then after that, I'm, I mixed a darker black, a more concentrated black and a more concentrated purple. And I splashed it on there in certain spots. I hit it so it kind of gave that two-tone thing. Um, that's how you get your lines like that. So yeah, that's that. I haven't ever, I don't think I've done any videos like this where demonstrating how to do things, but I mean, we're all stuck inside anyway. You can get to Walmart and get yourself some dye. You don't need anything fancy. A uh, little tie-dye kit, um, some cotton shirts or something that's like high cotton. Read it. It's like 50-50, you'll get like a real cloudy color. Um, the dye is only good for about 24 hours anyway, so whatever you mix, go ahead and use. Press the shirt.
shirts. Da, da, da. They have soda ash there if you want. But I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna dye these tonight after I finish my homework. And this is going to a home hopefully tomorrow. And I'll show you results of it. And it's probably gonna be like pink. I don't know, pink. What color did they say? Uh, they wanted like a greens and greens and like a golden browns. So maybe I'll do that instead of pink. I'll do like a like a greenish color and then like a golden brown. So instead of pink, I'll do greens. Um, and that'll be that. Yeah, I'm gonna take this down. I don't know who's still on. If anyone watched me at all, because I can't see anything. But, um, hey, I got some people here. Hello, peoples. Upload it. I can't, I can't upload it to, um, YouTube. It doesn't let me save it, I don't think. I can try. We'll see if it'll allow me. Um, well, yeah. If you, have, if you don't know, like, I actually shaved my face and I, I dyed my hair a little bit. I'm probably going to do silver later. Shaved my face, I look goofy. A little goofy. Um, yeah, I'll post some pictures of this tomorrow. Hey, thanks for watching, you guys. Love you guys.